Mr. Speaker, our country was founded and bases itself on civilian control of the military. And when I wore the uniform of our country, I, like all other military people in uniform, followed orders. I obeyed my commanders, and I tried to do whatever the mission was that was set before us. That's what you do in the military of the United States under civilian control. But I'm not a, in uniform anymore. I'm a civilian now and part of that civilian authority. And it's our patriotic duty as part of that civilian authority to ask questions, to constantly re-examine the strategy, to constantly re-examine the policy of this country, to do everything we can to, one, accomplish our mission, and secondly, and as or more importantly, protect the men and women who are actually doing the fighting for us now. That's why this debate, I would have hoped, would have been more broad, that we would have had more opportunity, because this debate in this country has to take place in this building, on this first floor, here and in the Senate chamber. It is the patriotic obligation and duty of civilian authority to do that. And I'm proud to be here tonight. Now, I have supported resolutions like this in the future, but I want to ask uh, Mr. Coble, could I ask uh, Mr. Coble, uh, Mr. Coble, could I uh, ask you a question, sir? Uh, there was a news report this morning that the new Iraqi government is negotiating with some of the elements there in Iraq that are insurgents who have been murdering Americans. And this was what one of the Iraqi government officials said this morning in these news reports, and I quote, there is a patriotic feeling among the Iraqi youth and the belief that these attacks on Americans are legitimate acts of resistance and defending their homeland. These people will be pardoned definitely, I believe. Now, unless that can be cleared up, I am not prepared to vote for a resolution which says in part that the United States and its coalition partners will continue to support Iraq. If, they, if this government in Iraq is going to grant amnesty to people who kill Americans because they feel it's their patriotic duty and they're defending their homeland, then we've got to reassess where we are with these people. Do you know whether or not this has been cleared up? Mr. Tanner, I do not know. I am told that, that it was announced that it was a mistake, but I cannot verify that. And this is a case of first impression with me, what you've just Well, I, I, hate to I, I don't want to catch you off guard. The gentleman's but, time but has expired. We need to clear this up before we vote on this resolution. I don't think the American people will the support the a government that grants amnesty to people who seconds. kill American soldiers. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from North Carolina. Speaker, I am pleased to yield two minutes to the gentlelady from New York, who, by the way, is the founder and chairman of the bipartisan, bicameral, anti-terrorist funding task force, Ms. Kelly. The gentlelady is recognized for two minutes. Thank you.